Well, Jonathan Ray has a habit of asking the impossible. My name is David Bruce. I am a member of the New Irish Arts Board, and it's a great privilege for me to have the opportunity to draw the threads together. I say great privilege. I'm terrified, not quite sure how to do it, but hey. The mission of God and the creative arts in five minutes. Bearing in mind that we inhabit a setting uh, which is increasingly complex, perhaps hostile, misunderstanding not only of what we have to say, but possibly puzzled sometimes by the way we say it. Makoto Fujimara is a Japanese visual artist now living in the United States. He used to be an elder in Redeemer Presbyterian Church in Manhattan, and he believes passionately in the arts as a vehicle for mission. He says this, and I quote him, the arts are a cup that will carry the water of life to the thirsty. It's not the water itself, it's the vessel. Oftentimes in mission today, isn't it the case, it's as if we pick up the water with our bare hands and try to carry it to the thirsty. And we can still do it, but the effect is, is minimalized by not fully using what God has given us. The water trickles through our fingers and is lost. I had a friend at university, uh, his name was Jeremy, still is, uh, Jeremy Begby. Uh, we were studying theology, uh, he was a year ahead of me at Aberdeen. Uh, Jeremy trained professionally as a pianist. Uh, he was, after we had finished our theological studies, he was ordained in the Church of England. He now teaches uh, theology at uh, Duke Divinity School, again in the States. He teaches on theology and the arts. And uh, particularly on using the arts as a vehicle for mission and indeed as a way in which the work of the Holy Spirit can be uniquely honored. He likens this to jazz music. I don't know if you'll, I just love jazz music, uh, always have. And he says that jazz takes the essential framework of harmony and form, even in its predictability, and then improvises, weaves around it, creates a spark, a frown, a smile, a riddle, a teaser, a prophetic moment. It's rather like, says Jeremy, it's rather like a preacher in full flow who suddenly finds him or herself overwhelmed with the moment and says, look, I know that this is the message I prepared to deliver in the study, but I'm setting my notes aside because the Holy Spirit has moved me and I'm constrained to say this to you instead. But a jazz musician, or come to that, a preacher, can't innovate or improvise without a long apprenticeship, understanding the tradition, knowing the scales, respecting the rules, honoring the principles being rooted in the truth. Once these things have been mastered and have become intuitive, then, well, Creativity explodes. The competent musical technician becomes an artist. The preacher becomes a prophet. God speaks, the Spirit descends, mission happens, and it's unstoppable, unstoppable. And the arts impact pretty much every area of life. Even parts where we imagine they don't or shouldn't. Uh, Eugene Peterson, a name that will be, I'm sure, familiar to all of you from his wonderful translation of, or paraphrase of the, uh, the Scriptures, the message. He was a pastor, of course, primarily, and served a small church uh, for most of his life. And he movingly describes his conversations with the architects and structural engineers who designed the worship sanctuary in the church that he ministered in. 
Yes, these professionals had their calculations to do, their precise formulae to follow, their materials to specify, and their building regulations to, to satisfy, but it became clear in these conversations that in creating this remarkable space to the glory of God, where the people of God could gather and be moved to worship the living God, that they were artists. Using the medium of concrete and glass and wood, just as surely as Makoto Fujimura uses acrylics, watercolors, and oils, or Ross Wilson creates wonders out of bronze. And this is reflected in Scripture, isn't it? Where God commissioned craftspeople and artists and artisans of all kinds to construct and to decorate and make splendid the tabernacle and then the temple in Jerusalem, giving expression not only to the grand story of His plan for redemption to come, but His heart as the Creator the Creator who began by saying, let there be light, and then hung the stars like chandeliers. And after six days of delighted, creative abandon, finished with what? With a self-portrait when you were made. Made like Him, it is surely in our DNA to let rip with our gifts of creativity to His glory. Jesus' great commission to go and make disciples of all nations has mobilized millions to serve and has brought the gospel to unprecedented numbers of people groups all over the world. But the work of this convention, as it has been happening year on year in this place and increasingly in others too, to highlight this imperative to go has been just phenomenal. Its impact has been transformative. The involvement of New Irish Arts, as we've seen this evening, in this enterprise is therefore entirely right, and not just because they play very well, but because this unfinished task must lodge not just in our minds where we analyze it, but in our hearts where we are moved to, to give and to pray and also to go. May that be our experience as this magnificent week comes to a close.